So a couple weeks ago, I watched Licorice Pizza and The Worst Person in the World, both of which have become probably my top line favorites of the 2021 film season. But it got me thinking about both films and why I loved both of them so much. Location, cinematography style, and story specifics aside, there are lots of similarities across both films. Both films feature a female protagonist in their mid to late 20s, both trying to understand what they want to do in life. Both coming-of-age films don't follow a linear storyline. Instead, the bulk of the movie consists of vignettes of the main character's life that, at times, don't seemingly move the plot forward and act more like side tangents. And yet, this slice-of-life approach is perfect for coming-of-age films because it mimics how we feel when we are growing up in the real world. We identify with the turmoil that the characters are going through, and that is why I find Licorice Pizza and The Worst Person in the World to be such powerful and beautifully intimate films. I didn't grow up with these kinds of coming-of-age stories. I grew up with stories like The Princess Diaries or Mean Girls, which both follow a certain formula. Usually, the main character is introduced at the start of the film, and they identify something that they feel they lack, whether it's popularity or good looks or something like that. And so they try to go through a change. Oftentimes, it includes a makeover and making new friends. But then they take the change too far. They seemingly forget about their original friends, the ones who have always been by their side, and they end up becoming the worst version of themselves. So, something drastic happens, and they end up hitting rock bottom. The last 10% of the film ends with them now having hit rock bottom, learning from this mistake, and realizing that they've gone too far with whatever they have changed about themselves. Instead, they end up settling between who they were before and after the change, and in that way, becoming a new version of themselves. Why is everybody stressing over this thing? I mean... It's just plastic. It's really just... (coughs) Share it. Licorice Pizza and The Worst Person in the World are both not that kind of of coming-of-age film. And I'm not just talking about the lack of makeovers in both films. Both of these films don't follow the formula that Princess Diaries or Mean Girls did. In fact, they don't even follow a straightforward storyline, where everything happens in a consecutive order in the narrative. Instead, they consist of a collection of vignettes that generally relate to each other, but don't always resolve themselves. These vignettes sometimes seem like side tangents that end up meandering somewhere without purpose. Barbara Streisand. Sand. 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 Yeah, like sands. Like the ocean. Like beaches. Barbara Streisand. Sand? <sighs> no, like Streisand. Sand. Sand. So why does it work? Aren't meandering storylines that don't have the typical beginning, middle, and end just bad storytelling? Well, yes and no. In a conventional story, the beginning of the movie is usually where you meet the character, where you meet who you should care about and understand who they are. The middle is where the conflict is introduced and something happens to the characters. Then, the end, is where the conflict is resolved and the character has changed. Licorice Pizza and The Worst Person in the World both do have beginnings, middles, and ends, but only when you zoom out of each vignette and look at the collection as a whole. At the start of both films, you meet Alana in Licorice Pizza and Julie in The Worst Person in the World. You are introduced to who they are and what they're looking for. At the end of the films, both Alana and Julie have a different understanding of who they are and they also have a more nuanced understanding of the world around them. The middle is where it gets a bit messy, where all those vignettes don't really seem to show a real conflict. It's not like in The Princess Diaries, where Mia is conflicted about whether she is Invisible Mia or Princess Mia. Or like in Mean Girls, when dethroning Regina has made Katie a mean girl herself. In Licorice Pizza and The Worst Person in the World, Alana and Julie don't have a concrete story conflict. The vignettes in the middle of the film show that they're exploring life in their 20s, meeting new people, trying out different jobs and activities, and just discovering what they like and not like. It's mundane, and it's nowhere near as big of a conflict, or as dramatic of a conflict, as those found in The Princess Diaries 
or Mean Girls. But it works, and we stick with it, because what Alana and Julie are going through is what we all go through in our own lives. We experience those same feelings of self-doubt, and we experiment to find out what we like and who we truly are. The quote-unquote big problem that Alana and Julie are facing in their films is one that we all face in our own lives, the problem of not really knowing who we are. Even when on the surface, we seem to have some notion of what we like to do and who we like to be friends with, we are constantly searching and discovering what our life is and will be all about. That's what growing up feels like. And so, those vignettes in Licorice Pizza and the worst person in the world match how we would try to solve our quote-unquote big problem. When we explore, we try things out. We end up in situations that somehow just happen to us. And sometimes we figure it out, but sometimes we don't. Just like our own lives, as we're growing up, we often meander into liking one thing, and then meander back when we discover that, actually, we don't like it after all. In a story, meandering back and forth like that means the vignettes don't feel purposeful, which on paper might not work for a story. But the situations we encounter in our real lives don't always have a purpose. The vignettes are mimicking life, where life is chaotic and messy, where we go forwards, backwards, and all the way around just to end up where we started in the first place. Most times, that journey of messy discovery is how we learn. The reason Alana and Julie have changed at the end of the story is that they did go through the various scenarios in their films. It's not the exact results of what happened in those vignettes throughout the film that matter. Instead, It's what Alana and Julie discover in those scenes that affect their idea of who they are. And together, all those discoveries about their identity gradually improve their understanding of who they are and result in who they become at the end of the film. Without a doubt, creating these sorts of films and stories requires some careful meandering. What's masterful about Licorice Pizza and The Worst Person in the World is that when I experience both films, I feel like I don't know where the films are meandering to which is powerful because it feels so similar to what we experience when we're growing up in the real world. We don't always know whether what we are doing will be meaningful in our lives, and whether what we happen to be doing will lead to something good or bad in our next chapter. But like the films, when we look back at our collection of experiences, somehow everything links and has affected who we've become, just like the vignettes in Licorice Pizza and The Worst Person in the World. In that sense, I believe that both filmmakers have really been able to deliver masterful, well-balanced, evocative films that mimic life's journey. Does this mean that it's the end of films like The Princess Diaries or Mean Girls? No, not necessarily. I personally believe that films have many different purposes. The Princess Diaries and Mean Girls were both fun stories that were perfect for me when I first watched them as a tween or teenager. I probably wouldn't have appreciated and resonated with Licorice Pizza and The Worst Person in the World without the lived experiences I've had in my teens and early to mid-twenties. But as much as I resonated with Alana and Julie now as a late 20-something-year-old, I don't always feel like I want to watch an emotive, thought-provoking coming-of-age film. Sometimes, all I want to do is watch a dramatic, and often silly, larger-than-life story where an unpopular, practically invisible high schooler, finds out her grandmother is a queen and discovers whether she's ready to become a princess. Exactly. You're not just Amelia Thermopolis. You are Amelia Mignonette Thermopolis Renaldi, princess of Genovia. Me? A, a princess? Shut 